But let me tell you the truth. We started with a perfect car. <laughs> There's and, a lot of work. And do you see how well our painter did reproducing patina? Look at that patina. Don't you know that guy's an artist to be able to do that? Oh, yeah. I, actually, I do know the artist that did that. <laughs> Took him what, about 40 years. Yeah. Right? What was his name? Oh, that's God. God's the only artist that can do yeah. that. <laughs> it's set in the backyard with a tarp over it, and that's what really... This old Chevelle looked pretty rusty, but it was an SS 396, purchased brand new by John Graham. He drove it up until 35 years ago when he parked it right there in his backyard. This car meant a lot to him. We started dating when the car was only, what, about eight months old. I didn't care about cars, so, and I'll tell you this early on, if you're going to date a girl to love your car. <laughs> Marilyn Graham, the girlfriend for whom this car was bought, to impress. It is not me. John Graham bought this car brand new, Valentine's Day, 1966. I am not the one. But she was the one, and this car was part of that courtship to be sold this very day. We were there to record the story for Hot Rod Magazine, September 2021 issue. And I really hated the bucket seats. I thought that was just dumb. Because then I had to sit in the middle of the <laughs> gear shift. And that was not, you know, really comfortable all the time. The new owner, Buddy Strickland, and his wife, Tony. I'm going to run the store and make some money to pay for all y'all, okay? <laughs> yeah. Buddy was the owner, but he hadn't even seen the car. Except in pictures, back when we picked it up. Back in January of when we bought it, Buddy had a, a massive heart attack and we almost lost him. That shook me up pretty good because he had just bought it the week before he had put the money in my account. Buddy bought the car, but... JB talked me into it. <laughs> their vision for this car was to have the original owners drive it. That's the first thing I told him. I said, we get back running, we're going to get him to either take it to him or he can come here, keep it a day, a week, a month, whatever he wants to do, and drive it till he gets tired of driving it. Then we'll put it up or something. <laughs> JB had the Chevelle and it was done. Ready for show. Starting out in Mount Airy, North Carolina, we rolled past Winston-Salem, North Carolina en route a couple hundred miles to Elizabethtown, North Carolina, where Buddy lived, where we would debut our Chevelle at the Made in the Shade car show. People are going to look at this, think it's a rust bucket. Oh, go yeah. over, go over oh, there. Yeah. What was it? Marilyn called it a rust ball. A rust what? Ball. A rust ball. A rust heap. A heap of rust. <laughs> <laughs> we think it'll be safe to drive, but it'll make people scratch their head. Why did they bring this car to the show? I'm do is kind of walk around this thing and tell us how it was restored. I mean, it still looks like it did. What was the point there? This car will get more looks and more questions than a totally restored car. Our goal was to keep the good rust mixed with the original paint to create a good looking patina, even with these holes, but fix the underlying rust that disabled the car. Same for the mechanical problems. But would people understand? We'd find out when we got our car to the show. So if you look, the front fenders here haven't been repaired. They're, they're structurally, you know, okay for us to drive it. Just the same as Mother Nature left it when we picked it up in that backyard. All this windshield area here had to be replaced, the top of the dash. You wouldn't know it by looking. Brand new metal around that windshield molding. But will people notice all that good stuff? They would sure notice the bad stuff, but this would be gone. But we've repaired that. We repaired the rooftop because all this was rotted out. So what we've tried to do is make it where you can drive this car, but it still has the original patina. If you'll come back here, you can see again. Whoop. All of this section right here has been repaired. You know, that was a safety issue. You had to do it or the back glass is gonna fly out, same as the front. The reason for this red strap, Ronnie Souter fixed the rust and sent us this video featuring Yo-Yo but she's my security cat. And she helps push out that glass and then becomes the overseer, the boss, until, yeah, that looks fine. Okay, I'll get back to my stuff. All the metal here is gone. 
it will be replacing this part and this part. And as you can see, the post just got places bad. Here, the top skin, the lip that comes down is also missing. And we're backing it out. You can see where it unhooks out of this piece here. This is the part we're going to have to replace. More missing than there. It's got quite a bit of rust in it, but we'll replace the hood. We'll need to take the front end and loosen it from the body and pull it forward. But we won't be taking any of this loose. We just want to, to move it, pull it out to give us room to work on the cow. And remove the front end and pulled it forward to where we can get in here a lot easier to replace the dash and sheet metal here. We've got to remove all the dash and loosen the stern column and drop it down to be able to replace the top of the dash. Okay, so that's one major area. Got to be repaired. You can't drive it unless you do. Very cool. January 1986. We will be cutting out this panel and the package tray panel. This is a separate panel. This goes on top. This is the package tray panel. This is all hidden, but you'll see this inside is for the radio speakers and everything else. We'll go back and clean up all the factory seams to where the, the factory welded those panels in. Removed the old top, and we went back and cleaned up all the factory joints where the new top will go back where the original top fastened and we've cleaned up all the webbing on top and we sprayed a metal treatment on it. We've got the major issues where you can drive it. You know, it's not a 100 point car yet, but we didn't want to do that just yet. You can restore it anytime, but to get it back to this degree, I think you can only do it once like it is. Can we look at the trunk floor? Yeah. Let me get the keys here. In other words, the trunk floor was rusted out. No, just had a couple spots and we had that fixed. Listen how that door opens. I mean, it's too cool of a car. Now we haven't done the interior yet, but you know, original hubcaps, the jack. Here we go. So you can see back here, we had an extra clutch that came with it. The sun visors and all this, but I mean, the trunk's good. It didn't leak today in all this rain. So that tells us a lot too. So start from the frame up, the frame was good. Frame was good, the floors were good because of the $35 worth of undercoating. We removed the seats and a sound deadener and cleaned it up. It's amazing how well the floor pans look. They're, they're in excellent shape. Very little areas that needs any work done. By the time we got it out of that yard and paid for 6,500 smackers, First, had to free up that rear brake drum to roll it off the trailer. Yeah, it's moved a little bit. Chip, JB's good friend, went right to work on this Chevelle. Of course, Jonathan pitched right in, but JB, this rear brake hub was froze up something fierce. Yeah. We got some movement now. It was dark. When we rolled it into Chip's shop there in Mount Airy, North Carolina. That first day we got the car. <laughs> we still got the undercoat on. Yeah, that's what saved them. <laughs> Parked on dirt all those years in North Carolina? Pretty amazing. But it had problems. Uh, it had some holes. As you can see from the top side, and here's another rust hole on the passenger side front. It's not a show car. It's not, but it's an original. Been parked since 1986. Try to find one like that and, and get it where you can drive it. You know, Chipper there, he worked on it and got it running. Chip is Jonathan's friend that took the drone shots. Well, turns out Chip restores old cars in his spare time. Well, I've been working on my dad's 65 Corvette. So I've got... Looks like he had the chassis done. A... Uh, 396 
engine. So it was the big boy that went in the 1965 Corvette. This is actually a chassis to the convertible that I have. And this one is a 365 horsepower 327 car. Okay. So what do you think now, Jonathan? I think we might make some smoke come out the pipes. Absolutely. Chip knew all about these engines. We were going to crank this thing up because our friend John it's been a while there it is had been oiling the cylinders uh, 396 they'd already turned that engine over back at John's house see right there so we can go ahead and crank that engine just see if he can turn the headlights on and see if that is work that's always We've got power. So, borrow that electronic ignition off the Corvette 396. Not gonna test those old points. They were corroded. Installed new spark plugs and borrowed the wires from the 396 Corvette engine. That's one, so there is eight. Okay. And I had some racing fuel sitting around. Uh, I think it's 110 octane. All right, hold on. Ready? Let's see what she'll do. Chip, come over here and hit the gas. Running down that battery, not gonna start. Then Chip remembered. Okay, we're gonna run a hot wire from the uh, coil to the battery. To bypass that resistor and get a full 12 volts. Make sure we're getting fire. Go ahead. <laughs> That did it, huh? <laughs> Okay. We made it safe, but it, it's kind of funny because people look at it and like, what's the deal with that car? But you'll see tomorrow there'll be more people asking about this than any two shiny cars. We can paint it, you know, pretty, pretty easy now. Just strip it and paint it and fix a, you know, a couple little spots, but you know, if you paint it, you can't go back and put this patina on it. So we'll leave it like this, or buddy will, for a while, and then we'll we'll redo it. But it is an SS 396 four speed. This is the 396 three and a quarter horse that this car was born with. Got to have a new master cylinder for the brakes to uh, get it where John could drive it, and we could take it to a show and just have fun with it. You know, if this car was painted like this, I wouldn't be leaning on it. Still got holes in it. Oh, yeah. That's for ventilation. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ventilation. These are non-factory vents in the hood, so oh. this helps us get a little more airflow in there. <laughs> you know, you can have fun with this car. What do you think they'll say when they see this car, Chip? Um, well, I think a lot of them will say that's really cool. So. You think, what do you think they'll say? I think a lot of people's gonna say, is that thing run? 23 minutes out. Until John and Marilyn arrive. <laughs> Didn't notice it, but Buddy had just arrived. His first time to see the car. The 396 sounded good, but. Okay, we got a problem. What? It's flooding out in the back. I mean, it's pouring gas out. We can see right here. Wondered what Buddy was thinking about his new car. It's coming out so much, it's not safe to drive. What do we have to do, Chip? I may have to uh, tighten up some of these bolts. Better yet, Chip took a short video of the problem. I'm gonna text this to, to uh, Kirk and ask him what he thinks the issue might be. Meanwhile. Okay, this is first you've seen it in person now. What do you think? Yep, I like it. I like roost. Buddy had seen huh. pictures, but what is it? Get an elder rock. Yeah. In God we rest, ain't it? Something like that. <laughs> when you turn the screw down, uh -huh. in other words, clockwise, uh -huh. you're lowering the floor. Yeah, it's pretty. Turn it down like half a turn or one turn, then ease your jam nut back. You ain't gotta super tighten up, just snug it back up. We were meeting John and Marilyn at Buddy's house. We pulled over because John and Marilyn and their son, Monty, spotted us. Hey, hey how, how you doing, doing, man? 
<laughs> Good to see you. That's amazing. Does it run? <laughs> it's got new tires on. Look at that. <laughs> wow. It's got a key in it. <laughs> Does that mean it works? <laughs> new dash pad, new dash top, new top. Um, window channel. Good golly. In the back window. <laughs> Let's go to Buddy's and we'll unload this thing and see what happens. Let you look at it more. Oh. Hello, Miss Marilyn. My long lost friend. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Hi, Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah. Marilyn Graham. What do you think of it? How are you doing? I think it's amazing. She said, I think it's amazing. Does it look any different to you? No. Except for the top and the around the front windshield but uh, other than that same car <laughs> yeah. can you drive it if it runs well y'all well, come on let's get this okay. party okay. Right john and marilyn had driven 200 miles for this i knew it was going to happen and john didn't he didn't know that it was really running Chip was still adjusting the floats in the carburetor. So did selling the car, or should I say saving the car, all started with an email from Monty Graham. I feel like I know him from the videos. So that's about all. Yeah. Yeah. John finally gets to meet the man who bought his car. Well, we we've got to do a little bit of tuning on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See if we can get it cranked here. Yes. Do it? Uh, try it again. Yeah. Tapped on the top of the carburetor and it in the needle unstuck. What do you think now, Chip? Um, it's looking a lot better. So I think we may try to pull it off the trailer and then uh, run it up the road a little bit. <laughs> I can't uh, wait to get uh, in. Sure, it. somebody, it somebody wrote her and told her they would have offered more for oh, it. Oh yeah, and then some people said that we paid too much. Yeah, it's like so we're reading those things. No, I I've love made them. A, I've, this is very exciting. Now, where do you live? I can't wait. I'm gonna get to sit in it like I used to. Which one of the gear shift? He's gonna get straight. <laughs> huh? Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, you used to sit on the <laughs> between the seats. Yeah. Uh, we might put that in there. There we go. There we go. How about that? got a vacuum leak. Let's see if we can tighten these up a little bit. Just to be safe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, John, you ready to get back in it and crank it up and see? <laughs> no. John, you want to get in it and crank it up? I'm going to check I'll, it and see I'll if it's... crank it up. Ah. I can get in it. This is so... I can't believe it. Just like this. <laughs> I'm so great. <laughs> John, is this where I used to be? Yeah. You used to sit like that. Look at the look at the You got another lamp, he said. There, there's it. See his drone? Oh, yeah. Right there. Where is it? It's right there. See it?
there's a yellow line out there. And I said, yeah. well, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the horn when I yeah. turned. Yeah. And I told her, she wanted to know if it worked. I said, yeah, it works, but don't mess with it. And coming in when I turned, yeah. it beep. One, One horn, horn is blowing. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was not gonna pass you, and you <laughs> did this number, and you stepped on the brake, and you turned your turn signal on buzz out, so I passed you. And then I look up, and this car, this white car, come doo. What John has just had a great time, and he's getting carried away. He gonna put it on the trailer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, with driving this. Oh, God. Is this over? I guess it is. He still has the heavy foot. For today, we got a whole nother tomorrow car show. I've never been to a car show before. <laughs> He was able to do that. He can drive so well still. He's in pretty good physical condition, he isn't he? He is, yes. He is, he is. He has to be to keep up with me. Uh, Jerry, yeah. did you want to put that in, put a camera in there? I couldn't do these videos without help from these car people. My first car show ever in my entire life. Sir, what's your name? John. <laughs> Yeah, I want to put a camera in there. Well, it's turned out to be me taking video of John driving into that show. No power steering. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. That's Jonathan, or JB, carrying in some chairs. Watch this. We don't even get into the car show area, and a guy comes up to the window. How you doing? Hey, what do you want for it? <laughs> you have to talk to somebody that owns it. What do you want for it? What do you get? I don't know. I got one just like it, man. I love my Chevelle 66. <laughs> 66. I got a beautiful one at home. Why would you want this one then? So I have a stick one. I ain't got all of mine automatic. I think our Chevelle look like it might be viable. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brand new experience for John. We'll fill it out out here. Okay. So we park and we're next to this really hot late model Corvette. And the first to look is the man from the Corvette. Feeling something out, Jonathan? Yes, sir. This is the John Graham Chevelle. That's what my, my friend here has dubbed it, and I think it's sticking. That's a money car right there, an all original 67 Chevelle. That's a money car, or a 66, whichever it is. 66 Chevelle, that's money. What do you mean by money? It's authentic, you know, because you can't, you can't find that. You can find a lot of restored Chevelles, but you can't find one like this. Nice car. Look, here's quite a few people that surround it here, yeah. You can see all the paper. Looks like John over here is already holding court at his first car show with a car entered. And they said the undercoat was what saved it. <laughs> Did it have a vinyl top on it? Did it have a vinyl top on it? No. After a few minutes, that car right there has got more history, more stories, more memories than anything else out here. I know, because he's with it. It'll always be the John Graham car. Oh, 158,000. I don't know if I could have let it go or not. <laughs> what do you think of the rust, like showing this rust well, here? How, how many do you think of that? It's, I, I don't know. I'd leave it just like it is if it were mine. Now why? Character. It's got character. Now, that's the most interesting car I've seen out here. 
All right, tell me something. What are you thinking? I'm thinking what the trunk look like. Yeah, he bought it new, the guy in the hat. I asked him, he'll show you, he loves, he'll show you. I was just looking to see did it have a trunk at all, but it's got one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Most people put a piece of plywood back there. A constant stream of people for two or three hours. Do what now? Clear coat it. Oh, okay. Like that. Clear coat right there. Yeah, this one right here? Like yeah. This? yeah. yeah. Just put some clear on it. That way it won't rust no more. Well, I know where there's a 66 Chevelle sitting at right now. The guy's been sitting there in his yard probably for 30 years. He won't, he won't part with it. I've talked to him about it. I've, tried to, I've, I've even tried to buy it. He says he wants to fix it himself. Stock. Nothing touched. Just like it is. You can find them fixed up all the time. You don't find them like that. I've been up for two days and two nights shining on this. 03 and people won't even look at it. They walk right by this Corvette and go look at this rust bucket. It breaks my heart. I hope my mother doesn't see this. <laughs> Past this 69 Chevelle and this Nova was a beautiful 67 Chevelle SS 396. Had a 427 in it. Meanwhile, this was Maryland's first car show. Hey, so is John having a good time? He's having a fantastic time. He's compared to no other time in his life. He's loving it. A long time subscriber to Hot Rod, and now his car was on those hallowed pages. That's it. Who are these people right here? There they are. That's Monty, our son, my wife, Marilyn, and me. That's back before they towed it out. All right. Too dramatic. What's this? What's going on here? Hello. Hey. You have to be gassed, okay? No mosquitoes in this area for 24 hours. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, sir, uh, I think you're out of code or something. You know, something going on there. Oh, yeah. Now, how cool this is it to have John Graham here? Yeah, that's it, man. I mean, he's like a, a part of the original equipment. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the first thing I told him. I said, we get back running. We're going to get him, either take it to him, or he can come here, keep it a day, a week, a month, whatever he wants to do, and drive it till he gets tired of driving it, and then we'll put it up or something. <laughs> Are you going to do this again? I hope to. Hey, <laughs> you might buy it back. Ball. Oh yeah, rust ball. It is still a rust ball. <laughs> rust the same demonstrative ball. Te technique on the video. Uh, yeah. did, oh, did you see that? Oh yeah, I loved it. Yeah. What did you think of her? <laughs> oh, she's a star. I mean, she was an immediate star. <laughs> so fast. No, it go so fast. Yeah, because you were going fast, and the drain could keep up. Oh. Well. Let me tell you, we still got it, don't we? <laughs>